kind of confess that the words weren't the best. You're kind of done for, with Jamal Adams. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm super, super frustrated with Jamal Adams. Yes. yes. Yeah, I can't be done with them because you can't eat. The, there's no gain to it, and they're yeah. not going to make that cut. And I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think so. Okay, you need you need to squeeze whatever you can out of that orange. You need to get the last bit of juice. You have invested so much sunk cost and are paying him so much money, and he does have a skill set when he's around the line of scrimmage that he's a difference making safety. Maybe one of the best. You know, we'll see coming off the injury, and it was a catastrophic injury. It was a real injury. Do not want to diminish yeah, any of that. You don't have that. any issues with his injuries, right? I mean, no. the guy's been legitimately I mean, been hurt, etc. fused his fingers together right. like Edward Scissorhands, poor guy. Like, he's, yeah, he's he's thrown his body around. His shoulders are beat up. His, you know, and then this, you tear the quad tendon away from you. I mean, that's a that's a real significant deal, and I don't minimize any of it. Okay. My frustration and this has been consistent. My word choice wasn't great. That's what I'm confessing about. My word choice of saying, be around your teammates, a lot of new teammates. Hey, Jordan, the same thing. So that was not a great argument. The argument I will stand on, and I have for 14 years, is the great teams, the best teams. The 2011, 12, 13, 14 Seahawks. Do you know what they did in OTAs? They competed their butts off. We were there. They, we... We were there when Richard and Doug got in a brawl mm -hmm. at OTAs, right? We've been there when the Seahawks have been fined and lost draft picks because they're too competitive at practice. I was there in Indy. I was there in, in Seattle. I've been everywhere I've been. It's the same thing, man. You want your guys to be there. You want them to compete. And you certainly need your highest paid players to be a part of that. They're, they're, they're the front runners of it. And in this case, everyone else is. Like on this team, DK is there with Gino. He, they're there in, in, in Tyler. They're there working. So I, I just can't grasp being in Florida 3,000 miles away posting your Instagram videos of you on the treadmill. Like, come on, bro. It, it, go be with your team. You have January, February, March, April. You got four months. You have from, you know, when this ends, whatever, June 10th to July 28th. You got five months to go be on your own. Go be with your team. So I, 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 I mean, you, can't you get and I see that. this exactly the same. I mean, the, the, this state comes back to you know the, the the there's probably been no other singular issue that you and I have argued against the entire world together yes. at, uh, more than this issue. Well, Russell which is, for a lot of years. It was you well, know, you fine. And I were That's team true. Russ. At times, it was us against the world on that <laughs> yes. too. But just over the over the years, this idea of voluntary and what it means to show up for voluntary camps. Yep. And you know. This is even another step beyond that because I think, you know, for us, it was more about guys that were healthy, right? Hey, you have a voluntary camp. Yeah, well, it's voluntary, so I'm not going to go. Okay, well, I, I just think about what Pete said about, hey, we're always judging everybody, yeah. right? Everything is judged. Everything contributes to who you are and kind of, you know, how you're viewed by the team. And if you choose not to show up for voluntary workouts, you don't have to be there. But that is another data point that you, is not helping the team. You said last week. Rightfully so, I think. And I didn't really argue against it because I, you know, the more that I thought about it, I think I think you're right. It, it's easy to point to the 2014 Super Bowl and that decision and everything else is kind of the downturn and the disintegration of team and all of that. And that was really hard. And coming back from Super Bowls, all you have to do is look at history for any team and how hard that is when mm -hmm. you lose it. But it was Cam holding out. And it and it was and it's kind of the same premise. Like you you don't want to be with us? You know, when, you, when you're an employee, right? All these kids in college see, in the training. I see that one differently. I see that one differently. But go ahead, finish. These college kids, right, who enter the portal. Like, I need, I don't want to be here anymore. And, and if a coach tries to say, well, you know, I, when I'm done, I'm done. I, I, let me out of my, my letter. Let me, if I don't want to be here, if I'm an employee, if you're an employee somewhere and it's miserable for you to go to work and you don't want to be there, how productive are you going are you going to be versus I, I really look forward in, in your business in your occupation in your job. I really look forward to going to work. Mm -hmm. Now I, I know you and more and Justin don't look to forward to 4 AM. I, I totally get that. But once we walk in the building, I think the four of us look forward every day. I, I think we look forward in 20 minutes to creating yeah, something. So I, I, I'm with you on all of that, but I, I will, while I believe that there's some truth to the fact that the, that the cam holdout sort of started the era of, what, what was the word we used the other day? Turbulence. Mm -hmm. 
I don't put a holdout in the same category as not showing up for voluntary workouts. That's business. Too. That's business. That has nothing to do with my desire to play. Yeah, nothing I, I, to yes, do. They're with, different. I'm they sorry. Different. I see that. No, no, differently. no those are that different. Is, this is my opportunity to, to to make as much money as yep. I can, and I and the league has set it up so I have almost no leverage. Yes. This is the only thing I can do to try to leverage my team. Yes. And I look, I don't know whether I would do it or not, but I it's hard for me to ever say that has anything to do with the guy's love of the game. No, I But I, not coming to yep. voluntary workouts? Dude, yep. I'm right there with you. What do you mean you're not there? This is your opportunity to show how much you love the team and the game and everything else. And I don't put – let me be 100% clear. I did not use those to be analogous. Okay. They're, they're not. They're very, very different. But it was the – that was painful. You know that hurt, Pete. <laughs> You know, and you know that hurt the team. Like, gosh, really? I mean, you are our bedrock guy. Can't we find a way to figure this out? And when, I mean, I remember taking a text from an agent two days before that happened. And the agent saying, you won't believe what's about to happen at camp. Right? Because things had gotten a little turbulent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was after the Super Bowl. <laughs> things have been turbulent. I'm like, really? He's like, I am not going to tell you what it is, but you won't believe yeah. the bombshell that's coming. It, it, it was big. And and obviously a lot bigger than whether or not Jamal Adams or, yeah. or uh, yes. Jordan Brooks shows up at uh, OTAs next week. That is not going to have a gigantic effect upon this team. But it, it is a meaningful data point and one that yeah. I know you and I will probably uh, circle and remember and see later whether or not it factors mm -hmm. into the way this team and ends up by the end of this year. how much, how great Jarek Reed is. Yeah, exactly. Let's well, hear about Julian Love. I told you that yesterday. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm sorry. I, and I love that Pete was raving about their seventh round pick, Jarek Reed. Sixth. Don't Whatever. Hate sixth. sixth round pick, Jarek yep. Reed. Okay, <laughs> like he's a safety. It just so happens that your favorite guy was your sixth round safety. Uh, Tim was a fifth rounder. Yeah, I, hey, I'm not Sturm saying he's not going to be a good player. Rounder. KJ was a fifth rounder. I'm not saying he's not going to be a good player. I'm just saying the way he talked about him <laughs> seemed like maybe there was a little bit more meaning in there than just uh, how his how he felt about his first couple days of practice. All right.